you did it anyway. This month I'm giving away a G Pro Wireless and a G613. Check out the description to see how you can enter. What's up guys, I'm here on my channel Gear Dink where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And on my channel that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. And today we're talking Windows 11 and five things to do after you just got done installing it. Now if you made the plunge because you ignored all of our TechTuber advice who said not to do this until you absolutely had no choice, that's fine. I'm gonna show you what you need to do now that it's up and running. So number one, the biggest thing that people are gonna ask is how do I get rid of VBS? VBS or virtualized based security is the feature that can basically detriment gaming performance. And so I'm gonna show you three of the four ways on how to turn this off. The fourth way is actually messing with regedit files, which I'm not going to talk about in this video because I really don't think you should mess with that unless you really know what you're doing. So number one is simply not to have it installed by upgrading from a previous version of Windows 10. And if you wanna tell how you can see if this was actually what you did, I'm gonna show you right now. All right, guys, so VBS, again, is the feature that is Windows security, but essentially it's the things that can potentially cause you to have less gaming performance than you would want. So the first thing that you want to do is see if this feature is enabled. Once again, if you are coming from Windows 10, it shouldn't be enabled. However, if you want to double check, here's all you have to do. You can click on either your Windows icon or the search bar. Once you do, you're going to type in MS Info 32, and this is going to pull up your system information. Now, once this is pulled up, you're going to get a bunch of information for the system itself, which obviously some of it I blocked out for my personal information. But if you go down here, you're going to see that in terms of virtualized base security, it is turned off. This is currently not enabled. Again, this is because I was going from a version of Windows 10 and then an update to Windows 11 where it is not enabled by default. Now, the actual feature of virtualized base security that affects gaming is called core isolation. If I look it up on my computer, it doesn't appear because I don't actually have any of those features enabled. I was able to find a video and I'll give full credit to this guy. It'll be linked down in the description below. But basically you type in core isolation in your features, um, in your settings or your search bar, whatever you want to do, and it will pop up immediately and then you can just turn it off. This should solve the issue for the majority of people out there who are dealing with performance hits. Now, the final way to get rid of VBS is to disable it in the BIOS. Now, this will be determined on whether you have Intel or AMD and the manufacturer of your motherboard. And so it's not going to be one size fits all, but let me show you generally how this is going to work. You're going to hit Deleter F2 to get into your BIOS when your compu uh, computer is first booting up. Once you're in, you're going to click on Advanced Tools or something like Advanced Tools, and you'll get a bunch of options. For this one, it's under our CPU. So when we click on that option, we're going to get a bunch of different icons. But down at the bottom, you'll see that virtualization is disabled. This means there's no virtualization that can happen with the CPU on this computer. And this is how you make sure that basically none of that's able to happen, in, in, you know, period, if you don't want to deal with it outright. Problem with this is that you won't be able to run any virtual machines on the machine. So this is kind of the option that you don't want to do if you've got a bunch of virtualization already going on. Try one of the other two, either by updating from a version of Windows 10 or turning off core isolation. All right, so for our first step, that was fairly long, but let's move on to step number two. So guys, I wanna show you how to clean up that taskbar now that you have a nice new operating system. All right, guys, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna customize our taskbar. Now, Windows 11 is going for a very uh, Apple aesthetic by having kind of all of your icons centered down here. I'm gonna show you how to change that if you wanna make it more look like Windows 10. But obviously there are a few things down here, specifically this chat app, which even though I uninstalled Windows 10, is still there. So let me show you how to adjust those. So all you're gonna do is right click and go to personalize, which will bring up your settings for personalization. And then down below, you're gonna click on this taskbar tab which will load the different settings that we wanna mess with. Now, here's the thing. These ones are pretty straightforward. If you don't want the chat, which I don't, you simply click on and off and it's gone. You don't have to deal with it anymore. I did try to see if there was a way to get this removed, but basically you'd have to mess with the reg edit, which I've said in this video, I don't recommend unless you know what you're doing. That being said, at least this way, you don't have to deal with it down in your taskbar. Corner overflow is a useful tool for people who don't want to have to basically click up into their icon down here for things that they have. So, for example, let's say I wanted OBS down there, Steam, uh, you know, what NVIDIA broadcast. So that creates these down here. And so basically you'll be able to just click on them without having to go up if you want kind of a quicker shortcut to whatever you're doing. And the next thing that I want to show you guys, like I said, is if you like having your icons down to the left hand side, uh, just like Windows 10, it's really easy to fix this. So all you're going to do is taskbar behavior. Behaviors, and this is going to give you your taskbar alignment, which will allow you to either hide your taskbar if you don't want it there at all, or if I want it down on the left hand side, 
it's a simple click from center to left in the taskbar alignment and there it is it's much more like how a 10 is if you're used to kind of going down left when you're doing manual searches and things like that so this is very easy but this is how you personalize any of your icons or your taskbar if you so choose to do so and that brings us to step number three Because Windows 11 is obviously going to push a bunch of stuff on you, let me show you how to change all your default apps. All right, guys, now that we have that squared away, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our default apps. Remember, Windows is at any chance going to push what they want you to use rather than what you want to use. And so we're going to have to change those. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our system and simply type default apps to bring up our system settings. And in here, we'll be able to change any of the applications that we want to, depending on what they are. Now, one thing that's super annoying is like, let's say, for example, you want to use Chrome as your default application for you know internet browsing as I like to do so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that what you'll notice is that I've already set a few of these tabs to be you know Google Chrome specifically for HTML and HTM but all these other ones still have edge and what you know unfortunately uh, and Microsoft is forcing you to do is you have to go through each of these and change them individually so let's say I want this to be Chrome I have to click and manually change over every single one of these to Chrome for all of the different uh, web applications that I'm going to use, which I'm going to do right now and make sure that Chrome is essentially the one that I want set up. All right, so everything's all switched over to Chrome. We're all good there. Now, if you look at here, I've got mail and there's a bunch of other things that I have yet to set up, but this is the main thing that you're going to want. Now, annoyingly, you're gonna to have to go through again and basically go through each one of these and see if it's something that you wanna change any of the apps to. But if you wanna know basically making sure that you're not pulling up like Bing and stuff like that, that's how you do it. Which brings us to step number four. Now that you have the shiny new operating system, you wanna make sure that your graphics drivers are updated so you can take advantage of all the new features that Windows 11 has to offer. You can do this by going to either Nvidia's main website or AMD's and go into the drivers for your specific device installed in your computer. Otherwise, if you have GeForce or AMD's uh, Radeon software installed, you can essentially just pull those uh, either those softwares up and do a just regular driver update through them. Although they're kind of bloaty and I don't recommend having them installed unless that you feel like it makes it easier for you but make sure that you have the latest drivers installed to take full advantage of all of those features. Which brings us to number five. So we obviously wanna take advantage of HDR. This has been something that Windows 11 has touted. So let me show you how to do that. All right, guys, the very last thing we want to do is we want to enable HDR. Now, here's the thing. HDR is something that Windows has touted, and it's honestly going to be, I think, pretty great because it will allow you to use, you know, provided your monitor supports it, HDR in video games that haven't traditionally supported that feature. Uh, I am planning on upgrading to an HDR monitor myself because mine is not supported, but I want to show you guys how to basically enable this feature, and I am going to link a video on how to do this the whole way through as my monitor doesn't support it. Typically, it's pretty simple. You right-click, Go to your display settings, which will pull up obviously display settings. And then when you're in your system, you're gonna click on HDR. And what this is gonna basically do is this is going to bring you to your settings tab, which will allow you to enable HDR. Now, if my HDR was enabled, right here is where there'd be two on and off buttons where I could turn it off and turn it on. Now, if you don't see those buttons, but you do have an HDR monitor, where you're gonna find it is basically in your graphical settings. So you're gonna go down to your search tab and type in graphic settings, which is gonna pull up the tab itself. And then once you're in here, you're gonna do change default graphic settings. And in here, you can see that I have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and variable refresh rate, but I don't have any HDR settings. But if I did, there would be a set of buttons here, which would say HDR for auto HDR off or on. And this is where you would turn it on. Again, go watch that video if you wanna see what this looks like, but I hope that that was helpful. And there you have it guys, five things to do after you've installed Windows 11. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave me a big thumbs up. If it was awful, leave me a thumbs down. Remember to get subscribed and hit that bell icon so you know when these videos drop next. I was wrong, there's a few days left in that giveaway, so make sure you enter it, unless you're watching this video after it's over, but don't worry, I have giveaways literally every month, so make sure to check back to the channel. And as always guys, I hope to see every single one of you next time here on Gear Dink.